Well, good evening. George Notchik here. It's Super Bowl Sunday. The Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. It was really a good game. There were some really excellent touchdown plays. You ought to catch uh, the game on replay if you didn't see it live. Uh, after the game, I was preparing to uh, make a, a few math videos, and something online caught my attention having to do with some symmetrical resistor networks. One was the classic resistor cube network, and another was the infinite grid network. Uh, but I was dismayed at how convoluted and complicated a lot of the solutions that were presented on the internet were. I mean, uh, uh, these aren't that difficult of a problem if you invoke symmetry, which you have in these two problems. And I'm going to discuss uh, how you can easily solve these networks basically by inspection, just uh, from the symmetry of the problem. Uh, some authors were using Y delta conversions, these serial, parallel serial combinations, breaking the circuit apart. I mean, it was long and convoluted. Don't need to do that. I'll show you how uh, by using certain uh, properties of networks, how you can easily uh, get to the solution. I'll first look at the infinite grid uh, network here. And each resistor in this infinite grid have the same value. All resistors are of the same value. I'm not putting them down here because it will just clutter up the network. But all of these have value R. And it's an infinite grid. It goes on forever. And the question is, is what is the equi equivalent resistance between any two adjacent nodes across the resistor? Looking into the network, if I were to take an ohmmeter and connect it between these two points, what am I going to measure for the total resistance? So the question is, is between nodes A and B, what is the resistance? Well, the most direct way to solve this is using superposition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a current source from, say, infinity, out here at infinity. I'm going to direct a current I into the network at A. And this current's going to flow. This is current I. It's flowing into node A. And it's going to split and go off to infinity and come back to the current source. All the currents are going to combine back to give us I flowing into the current source. So we have this loop going the current source into A, the current splitting, going out to infinity, and then coming back. Well, because of the symmetry of this problem, this current I has to split equally four ways. So in each one of these resistors, the current has to be I over 4. Now, let's take another current source and connect it to node B, but in the reverse direction. So it's pulling current I out of the node and sourcing it into infinity. So now using superposition, we're going to turn this current source off and we'll turn this current source on. The current coming I out of node B has to be coming from each of the four adjacent resistors with a value I over 4 to combine to give us current I. So we have superposition here. We have both current sources turned on now. We know that the current due to this current source is I over 4, and the current due to this current source is I over 4. So by superposition, the current flowing in this resistor is just the sum of those two, or I of the resistor is twice I over 4, or I over 2. 
Well, what's the voltage between A and B? Well, VAB is just R times the current in the resistor, which is R times I over 2. That's the voltage from A to B. Well, what's the total resistance? Well, the total resistance, RAB, is the voltage that the current source sees between A and B. So it's VAB divided by current I. Well, what's VAB? It's R I over 2, and we divide by I. The I's go out, so the resistance between A and B is just R over 2. So, if each resistor was 100 ohms, we put our volt or our ohm meter across A and B, we're going to read 50 ohms. If there are 1,000 ohms of resistors, we're going to read 500 ohms. So, basically, what we have going here is I can connect these two current sources all at infinity. So, we're sourcing a current I in and pulling the current I out, and we use superposition to get the total current between A and B, flowing between A and B in this resistor, which is just one-fourth of the current on each current source. And we have two of them. One due to this current source, puts in I over 4, this one pulls all I over 4, so we have I over 2 in the resistor, and hence we can get the total resistance. Now, there's another problem related to this, which is much more difficult. And I haven't looked to see on the internet whether or not this has really uh, been solved on the internet. I solved this years ago when I worked for uh, Hewlett Packard Labs. And the problem is this. Rather than finding the resistance between adjacent nodes, I'm asking you to find the resistance between diagonal nodes on this network. So, what we have going here then is this. All resistors again are the same, it's an infinite network. And what I want you to do is find the resistance between node A and B, which are diametrically opposed. So we want to find the equivalent resistance looking in there. Now, you can try using symmetry arguments if you want. It's not going to really get you anywhere. Because you could source a current in. It's going to, again, split equally. But you don't know what's going to happen to this current once it hits this node, how it's going to split. You cannot argue that it splits equally anymore. And it doesn't. Uh, that's the key to the problem, is knowing how these currents split, or this current splits. If we knew what this current was, then we could use Kirchhoff's voltage law. Take this current times this resistance, this current times this resistance, get the voltage there, and then divide by the total current that's flowing into either nodes A and B. Um, this is not an easy problem. Send me a correct solution, and you could send it to me on my company website rather than posting it online. My company is worldwideweb.adc, as in analog design consultants, hyphen Colorado. Dot com and all the information of contacting me my email and all that is on there uh, you can mail it to me email or direct mail whatever you want to do but if you come up with a correct correct solution I'll send you fifty dollars via PayPal and I'll keep this open for six months and then uh, after that if, um, I'll uh, go ahead and post the solution uh, but be forewarned uh, this is not easy. You have to use some pretty high-powered mathematics to solve this particular problem.